I should be writing number 428. Well, I should. Hi there. Welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And I finally got started writing again. I wrote last night, and I wrote this morning. I also recorded this morning, but lost that. Starting to uh, believe that recyclable, or rather rechargeable batteries might be good for the earth, but are highly unreliable. So I'm recording again. Essentially, what I wanted to talk about was how we should not be afraid to be stupid. So my thinking is, this is not giving yourself permission to write poorly. This is giving yourself permission to write that really stupid idea that you have, but you think is too stupid. You may not have one of these. You may think all your ideas are gold. Me, I have a couple of really stupid ideas. I was thinking about a Neil Gaiman story when I was driving home yesterday, And started telling my kid about it, and I thought, oh, she should read that. Well, I should reread it, because I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember some some key details. And I read it, and I enjoyed it. And then I started flipping through Neil Gaiman's other short stories. And he's got a short story called Foreign Parts, about a man whose entire world, his entire life is taken over by a venereal disease. And it starts with his penis. And it's not an erotic or pornographic type story. It's not really for kids, because it does talk an awful lot about body parts. But it's a story about venereal disease taking over a dude. By one of the most revered fantasy writers of our time. And I'm thinking, if New Gaiman can write a story about venereal disease taking over a guy. I can write my story about a modern-day Hercules who's a uh, fixer. Because if Hercules can kill or subdue a bunch of wild animals and clean out a barn of 1,000 years of dung with a river, he could probably clean up a dead body here and there. So I started my, uh, my short story, tentatively titled Hercules Jones, Professional Cleaning Services, No Job Too Small. Actually, I think No Job Too Small was my, uh, or No Job Too Large. What am I talking about? Uh, No Job Too Large. That was my tentative title. Because why not? I mean, ideas aren't stupid. It's the execution that makes it work or not. One of my favorite comic books right now is Kieran Gillian's Die. And it's, it's a portal fantasy about kids who go into their RPG world. I mean, that's not an original concept. I was watching the D- Dungeons & Dragons cartoon back in the 80s. But Gillian pulls it off. And that's the key. So today I want you to think about the stupidest idea you have. And if you have nothing else to write, why not write that? Because man... We're all getting older. Why not? What do you have to lose? I had a question come through that was about um, agents and how if you want to be a hybrid author, how do you deal with your self-publishing and your agent? And just speaking from my experience, I'd say that there are a lot of people doing hybrid publishing right now. It's a way to, you know, put food on the table. Authors don't make a lot of money for the most part. Sure, J.K. Rowling at one point was richer than the Queen, but she and Stephen King, they're all outliers. All the people who are on the bestseller charts for like months and years, those are the rich ones. Even people lucky enough to just land on the charts and then drop off in subsequent weeks, they're not rich. So if you think you can make some money self-publishing, a lot of people do it. So 
the deal with agents is number one, they work for you. They're not your mom. You don't need their permission. On the other hand, they have a vested interest in making your career be the best it can be. So if you're doing projects without informing them on what's going on, they're not going to have all the information they need to help make your career the best it could be. What can an agent do if you want to self-publish? Well, first they can say, hey, can I take a look at it before you self-publish and see if I can sell it? And if they can't or they don't think they can or they don't like it, then nobody can stop you, unless it's in one of your contracts, to self-publish it. But beyond that is not, the agent doesn't have to be out of the picture entirely. You can still sell audio rights. You can still sell foreign rights. You can still sell film rights. It's harder to sell those things when the book is published, uh, self-published instead of traditionally published, but, you know, weird things have happened. The whole power, power dynamic is weird because technically we are the employers and they are the employees, or rather we are their clients. They are contractors, sort of. Which implies that we have the power, except for the fact that there's so many of us and so few of them the power dynamic shifts because of supply and demand. They have their pick of authors. So it may feel like you have to do what they say, but you don't. On the other hand, the agent is also free to stop representing you if they're not happy with the way things are going or they're not happy with the communication. If they're talking about if they're talking to an editor about the awesome stuff that you're doing and the editor's like, hey, I saw that they self-published this thing. Why didn't you send that to me? And the agent didn't know about it. The agent's going to look stupid and nobody likes to look stupid. So communication is key. Talking to your agent about your plans, working with your agent about whether you want to self-publish or traditionally publish something. Those are all important things, but ultimately the decision rests with you. You just have to be ready for what they want to do after you make that decision. And this isn't me like speaking pseudo menacingly that they are going to dump you. But I'm saying if you can do whatever you want with your career, but so can they can do whatever they want with their career too. I have been fired by agents. I have fired agents. It goes both ways. So that's a little bit of talk about writing really stupid stuff and uh, working with agents. There's a really stupid thing I want to write that my agent has absolutely no interest in. So if I write it, I'm going to be self-publishing it. But that's it for me. Now I'm recording on my computer, so I have faith in all of this technology and stuff. Even if the power would go out, my battery would still last long enough for me to finish this episode, which I'm going to do right now. You can find me at merverse.com, mightymer at gmail.com, and patreon.com slash mightymer. Sometimes I'm on Twitter, and when I am, it's at mightymer. And I'll see you tomorrow for another discussion on writing, whether it's stupid stuff or good stuff. Because you should be doing that. Remember, you can support the show at patreon.com slash mightymer. I should be writing theme music so provided by John Emilio. You can find more about him at johnemilio.com. This podcast is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. The fact that's on to is on TV.